Okay, so the other day I made a video on this check valve, which lets air pass in one direction and not the other. Anyway, um, that's one piece of a ventilator, and then I made another video of my thoughts on making a ventilator. I have some revised thoughts on that. I'm going to show you a diagram of a machine that I think that could be built, and then I'm going to show you this valve, which is a PEEP uh, release valve that maintains a positive pressure during exhale. Um, I've got these files online right now. They're free and open source, again, in Onshape, so you can edit them. Um, give me one second and we'll get to that. So the other day I thought about a two-piston system to push positive air pressure during uh, the exhale cycle. Um, came up with a much simpler version that I think um, is much closer to how an actual ventilator works. Um, so this is a diagram, a functional diagram, of the pieces of a ventilator. Um, so up here you have an airflow mixing valve that mixes oxygen and air. Um, this valve has already been made. Um, it's perfect and 3D printable in about an hour. I will leave a link to that. I'm not going to design one because uh, it needs not be done. Then you have a humidifier, which is basically just an air bubbler. Um, I envision this as a Gatorade bottle with a short straw and a long straw coming out of the cap, which I might 3D print, but I don't think we're running out of those, um, so that's low on the priority list, but basically it bubbles the air coming out of um, this air mixing valve um, just to make it warm and moist. Um, then you have some sort of piston or pump system, which involves a check valve for in and a check valve for out. Um, I've got some more ideas on how you might build this piston, um, with a motor or a water wheel or a drum system, much like in a grandfather clock, um, where the motor turns around and then this, um, this piston arm pushes a piston in and out, sucking air in from this system and pushing air out to this happy guy over here. Um, <clears throat> then you have um, this peep valve, which is... Uh, this guy that I designed, um, which is a valve that will exhaust up to a certain pressure, and then at a certain low pressure it will cut off. And then after that you have a manually activated valve um, that will cut off this entire circuit um, during the exhale or the inhale phase. So while this piston is pushing air into the patient, uh, this valve closes, blocking the PEEP exhaust, forcing air into uh, this patient. And then uh, on the exhale stroke, when this piston is uh, inhaling um, this air system, um, this valve opens, allowing air to flow through the peep valve up to a certain uh, pressure um, and out through some sort of air cleaning filter or just a tube to the environment. And there's a lot of different ways to control this. So these two valves um, could be and would be better electronically controlled with something like a solenoid valve um, or a servo motor on a regular valve even um, with some sensors for pressure in here. Um, I made a mechanical version which is way less good uh, but might be useful if it comes to that. Um, if I made an all mechanical version uh, this valve here would be cammed to this motor such that when um, the piston is pushing air into the patient, the valve is cammed closed, and when it's um, sucking air into the cylinder, uh, the valve is cammed open so that this guy can, um, you know, exhale. Okay, so that's my thoughts on a new ventilator system. I think there are some great projects online. I will leave links to some better projects than this that use a lot of electronics, but um, you know, if, if and when we run out of Arduinos or NEMA stepper motors or motor controllers, um, maybe some of these parts can be used uh, in a more mechanical system. Or, um, you know, if, if pump bags run out, we can use at least check valves to build new pump bags. Um, so I came up with a couple of different systems, like a grandfather clock uh, with a drum and a weight. Uh, and a brake on the drum, and then the drum is geared to some sort of gear train, which then moves uh, this main wheel around like a Singer sewing machine, which again has a pin, a uh, piston arm, and a piston uh, driving the piston in and out. Um, 
I think this is a real last case scenario. It would require every hour or so somebody to manually pump the piston while somebody else rewinds the drum and lifts a gallon of water or you know, weightlifting weight or something heavy that would drive the drum in the system uh, for the next hour. Um, I also have a sketch for, um, I've been thinking a lot about how to build a piston that fits perfectly inside of um, a cylinder. Um, and then I thought of this, which some of you guys might recognize from high school days. Um, it's basically a big bucket with two check valves, one in and one out on the top, and you drive the bucket up and down, and that would suck air in and out of the top portion, while under the squiggly line is all water. And the advantage with that is that you don't need to precisely machine any piston and piston sleeve. Um, the water will conform and uh, slide nicely. Okay, now on to the peep valve that I made. Um, so this valve will allow you to exhale, but um, at a certain low pressure, it will close. So at a very low pressure, it is closed. Um, at a higher pressure, you can blow through it with some resistance. Um, the mechanism that it's using, here's an earlier uh, bad prototype, is <clears throat> um, this top piece, well, let's see. This is the top piece. Um, it screws into the bottom piece here. It has a mirror surface uh, that's printed against a piece of glass here. Um, these are air ports. This hole, a screw comes through um, like this. And on the bottom of the screw, you have two nuts. One is a lock nut to the other, so they can't rotate. And then you have uh, maybe a third of a Bic click pen spring. And that spring moves this, uh, pushes the diaphragm against those ports. Um, in this one, I'm just using a plastic bag as a seal. Um, in the other one, I'm using a bit of a bicycle tire. Neither of them are perfect valves. They both leak a little, but are um, pretty functional. Um, I think the big improvement to this design would be a better sil silicon sealing material. Um, I have some casting silicon, but I wanted to avoid a design that requires um, sort of specialty casting equipment. Anyway, that's kind of what's going on in here. Um, I'll open this up. Uh, again, I'm using some um, plumber's Teflon tape to seal the inner and outer housings. Um, and there's two lock nuts, a pen spring, the diaphragm with a piece of a bicycle inner tube glued to it. And so you can see, let's see, bring this camera closer. And so you can see when I blow hard, it will push the diaphragm away and allow air to pass. But at a low, low pressure, like um, what it takes to exhale, uh, or maybe a little lower actually, um, the diaphragm will be pushed by this pen spring against um, the orifice plate and keep it closed. So like this, if I push really hard, I can't blow. Um, if I let go, see if you can see that moving. Um, and so uh, the best solution for this guy would be definitely to use a solenoid valve and a pressure sensor and use an Arduino or some sort of microcontroller to control the peep pressure, which is the pressure uh, positively forced back to the patient during exhale. Um, but um, this is manually adjustable. So when you turn this screw in the top, um, if you back the screw off, what you're doing is bringing these two lock nuts um, up and compressing the spring, thereby adding force to the diagram, or diagram, the diaphragm. Um, and when you add force to the diaphragm, you need a higher pressure to push the diaphragm away from the or orifice plate. Um, and giving a higher exhale pressure. So here's an example, I just tightened it up. Now, obviously in a ventilator, um, you know, somebody needs to exhale on their own without pushing out. Um, so this would be way too high if I just take a breath. It's very hard to exhale through. So what I would do is um, drive the screw in a little bit, thereby pushing the lock nuts away from the diaphragm plate 
and lengthening the spring and thus decreasing the spring pressure between the diaphragm and the orifice plate. That's much easier to blow. Okay, so this is a poor solution. Um, I do not recommend it, but it is maybe a useful file if nobody can buy microcontrollers to control a solenoid valve um, for controlling peak pressure in a um, ventilator system, or if we, for some reason, go to mechanical systems. Um, I put the files again on Onshape. Uh, I've made what I could parametric variables, so you can change things like the diameter of the input and exhaust um, hose barbs to fit whatever system you're using, and I hope somebody will use this um, in something useful. Um, links in the description below, and I'll also leave some links to um, some other really excellent and useful valves and things that other people have been working on. All right, thanks for watching.